Hey guys, Jake Flo here, the Habitat Pro. Do you really need a mulcher or can you get away with just a grapple bucket and a brush mower? I'm gonna tell you that today, show you the finished product of one of those today on the channel. Like and subscribe if this is of any help to you. Here we go. All right guys, I'm actually at a camp that I serve at. I've been here for, gosh, it's gotta be 15 years, I'm not quite sure, a long time. Ever since my boys were first grade age and they could come, we've been coming. It's North Central Camp Carith in Frazee, Minnesota. Fantastic place to send your kids. We just put in a disc golf course. I'm gonna show you what you could do without a mulcher. Because a mulcher is gonna be in that, I, I'm just gonna say $250 an hour range. A lot more maintenance, you know, for those of you guys that are contractors, you're thinking, should I do a brush mower or should I get started with a mulcher? You know, should I buy a mulcher for my property? There's one key question that goes along with it and you're always weighing it against the maintenance because the maintenance on a mulcher is way more, way more than a brush mower. So 250 bucks an hour is pretty standard right now as of 2024. What we're doing today though, is we're in a brush mower and typically that's in the 160 to $180 range. Um, plus mobilization, that's always the same, right? You gotta pay the guy to you know, load his stuff and big truck, big trailer to get that stuff around. So let's take a look at before and after grapple bucket. I did some chainsaw and I blocked up some of the bigger stuff so he could move it with the grapple a little easier. But basically it's just a grapple bucket and the brush mower. Okay, and I'll show you that as we get going here today and the finished product that it'll give you so you can weigh it out. Hey, do I want to do my trails like this? Do I want to do food plots like this? That's what you're going to see today. All right, so we are in the woods at Camp Carith in Frazee, Minnesota, and you can see kind of what it started like, right? This is a maple oak basswood. They call it northern hardwoods. Um, and you can see it's a very mature canopy, a lot of shade in here. So the kids love coming up through here and we thought, hey, why don't we carve out a disc golf course for them? So the kids raised money, they gave their own money and we do now have one, but this is what it was like. So we grappled a bunch of stuff off first and then we got after it with the brush mower. Now with the brush mower, what he's doing is he'll drive forward first and buzz a lot of this stuff down, right? So it was all that high. So he'll drive forward first and buzz it all off. And then he will do a little bit of a bucket dump. So I'm gonna do this with my hand. So he drives forward mowing, then he does a little bit of a bucket dump and he back drags, just like you would do with a mulcher, but he's just got a bulletproof brush mower because there is, there's one thing for sure at Camp Carith, it is that you will find rock, huge rock, sticking out of the ground rock. So if you were doing a food plot, of course, you would probably pop a lot of these four and six inch trees with the grapple bucket first, right? You would rip them out, just the whole tree, okay? And you can see that is, yeah, there's one right there. That looks like an elm that he popped, stump and all, okay? So he just reached up. You can see he kind of leaned on it about four feet up, tipped it out, and then ripped out the root ball and then smoothed out the hole, right? So he used the grapple bucket to back drag the dirt back into the hole. And then we're coming back with the brush mower, okay? So we left a little bit of rough, right? For those of you guys that play disc golf, you know that it's very similar to real golf where you got the crooked stick and the ball. You do want some rough. So I'm sure this right here is gonna eat some Frisbees. Right here, it's nothing but ash, elm, maple, ironwood saplings, seedlings, uh, teenager type plants, right? They're in the four to six eighth, eight, somewhere inch diameter. You know, that's probably our biggest one right there. That ash tree, that's an eight incher. Every one of these trees, you could pop with a grapple bucket. You'd, you wouldn't need anything other than a grapple bucket to pop these trees, okay? Now, of course, you're gonna have some trash. Okay, so what you do is you pile it off of, you know, that's what he did back here. You pile it off of the site, you know, you'd pile it off of your food plot 
and then a couple years down the road if you want you can light a match if you don't care you leave it there doesn't really matter a lot of guys will pile it up around their plot and then shove openings in it so the deer come in where the hunter wants them to so all kinds of ways that you could get rid of your brush you can see there that's what we'd end up with right that's just one bucket full but if we were ripping out that stuff you'd end up with a pretty good brush pile but it'd all be in one spot right and then you could burn it later get rid of it put that organic back into your soil and you end up with a food plot And that is what gives you this finished product right here. So are you planting grass into it? You know, is it a yard right now? Probably not. You know, if you have rock like that, you can just, just look at what, now I want you to put yourself in a mulcher right now. That moss covered rock is your nemesis if you are in a mulcher. Okay, you can see he was back dragging right there and boom town. So that right there probably would have got rid of a tooth or two and you'd be down because as soon as you get rid of a tooth or two on a mulcher, depending on where it is, you get off balance and your head starts shaking to beat the band. I mean, look at, look at all these rocks. If you don't have trees, you don't need a mulcher. You could do probably 90% of the work that a mulcher can do with a brush mower and a grapple. Okay guys, he is currently processing about a six inch deadfall tree that was laying on the ground. So that's gonna be the big noise you're hearing. So you can do some stuff. He just took down a four inch maple that was still standing instead of pushing it over with the grapple earlier. I don't know if you just missed it or just thought, hey, this looks better without this maple here. So he just buzzed her down. But you, you can process some stuff with a brush mower. But don't let, them, don't let them con you into thinking it's a plantable food plot as soon as they're done if you have a bunch of tree material. If you got... You look down and you got mulch and you don't see dirt, like this is dirt. That's plantable. This is a hillside, but this would be a plantable food plot. If you look down and you got an inch thick of mulch covering your dirt, you need to skim the mulch. You need to have them put the gravel bucket back on and skim it, or you need to do it with the tractor or whatever. Mulch is not dirt. It'll turn into dirt someday, but while it's breaking down, it's gonna steal all your nitrogen you need to make sure that you are getting rid of the mulch that's on top so that you can see dirt. If you were a falling seed, would you be able to get to dirt is what you gotta ask yourself. If the answer is no, you gotta skim it. All right, so let's get after closing arguments here from the wildflower garden in the yard. I'm gonna just go with what each machine cannot do, okay? What each system cannot do. So number one, the grapple and the brush mower. They can't do big trees, right? There's no way that they can pop those stumps, get them, you know, lean on them enough with a skid steer. I mean, they can pop some good trees, but for the most part, you, you start pushing that six, eight inch range of trees, you're just not gonna be able to get them out of the way. You're probably not gonna be able to pop them very efficiently. You're gonna to wanna to either get a chainsaw in there and block that stuff out and get it out first, drag it out with a tractor, timber harvest, things like that, or you're gonna want that mulcher in there. On the flip side of that, the mulcher 
Number one, cannot do any brush moving. They have to mulch stuff where it is. They're not going to be able to move much out of the way. They can nudge stuff, you know, that's, they can turn the head off and they can kind of ram it and shove it in certain directions with uh, the head and the power of the machine, but they really can't grab stuff and just move it and put it into a pile for you. That's not an option. The other thing they can't do is they can't fix any dirt. Whatever swales, whatever pits, whatever holes you have in the ground that you kind of don't want there, they can't do anything about it. Whereas the guy that's there with a brush mower on a skid steer and a grapple, you know, they're, they're very much able to fix your dirt for you, right? They're, they're able to get it smooth. They're able to move this brush from A to B. And the big thing is that mulcher cannot remove stumps. They can buzz them to the ground. I mean, you guys have seen the videos on the channel. I love the mulcher. I love buzzing stuff to the ground. You know, when you've got, um, there's a, there's a food plot video that I have where we had timber harvest done. And then we brought in the grapple, cleaned up some of the trash that was on the ground. And then we buzzed off stumps with the mulcher. It works, but the stumps are still there. Okay. I have a no-till drill that rolls right over it. And we're only planting three eighths or a half inch deep anyway. If your standard tillage, that mulcher is not helping you much. You've still got that big stump material in the ground, right? Um, it also can't remove the mulch after the fact. So that mulcher's just got to keep processing stuff, but it really isn't going to move it for you. And like I said in the video, mulch is not dirt. Mulch is not going to grow good food plot products for you. They're, they're just not going to grow good plants. It's going to steal the nitrogen as that mulch breaks down. So don't let any mulcher contractor talk you into thinking that when he mulches it, it's going to be plantable. Maybe in some spots, but for the most part, you're going to be skimming some mulch after the fact. Whereas the HD brush mower can process a lot of the same small stuff very similar. You couldn't tell the finished product differently between a mulcher and an HD brush mower on a patch of brush, let's say. But the grapple bucket is going to be able to get rid of every stump that is, you know, six or eight inches or less. They're, they're going to be able to pop that entire tree and move it for you. And then, of course, you're talking maintenance, okay? What can't the brush mower do? It really can't break down as easily as a mulcher can. That mulcher is high-speed head, lots of little parts on it, you know, all those teeth. You got knives, you got carbides. You break those, it's such a high-speed uh, moving drum. Once the balance is off, you're shut down. So you're not productive. If you're a contractor listening to this, you're not productive, you're not making money. You already know that. Whereas if you are the homeowner or the landowner hiring this done, if it's sitting there dead, you're not paying for any mulching. You're not getting any mulching done, but you still paid the mobilization fee and he's got to come back. Bottom line is it's just, you're not getting anything done and you still paid 250 bucks an hour for that machine. If it keeps working, it's great. But what machine will keep working for both the landowner and the contractor? The grapple bucket and the HD brush mower guys is way more simple. You really get good productivity and arguably you get a better finished product. You kind of want a lot of those stumps gone. This, the, the grapple bucket and the brush mower does a lot better with stumpage. Like and subscribe, of course, if this was of any help to you. And of course, put your, put your thoughts down in the comments. Mulcher or the grapple brush mower combo? What do you guys think would be the best for your property? This is Jake Bull, the Habitat Pro. We are in Northern Minnesota. Get out and enjoy creation, guys. Good luck this season and God bless.